Welcome back to the channel. I'm doing this video, the truth about the next gen consoles. Is the PS5 or the Xbox Series X really worth it? And I'm doing this in the hopes to not bash the consoles, but I'm doing it to help you guys out because I've had first-hand experience with one of them and hopefully save you some money if that's what you want to do. It's up to you what you do with your money, but if you're on the fence about the consoles, I'm going to give you some actual truth about it and not just show you all of this like all of these showcase things like, oh, much faster loading times. No, it really isn't. In some situations, yes. But entirely, across everything, no. You're just going to be disappointed. So as a lot of you will know, I purchased the Xbox Series X. I am getting a PS5, but not until early next year. I have gone from the original Xbox One, so not the S, not the X, not anything like that. And I've gone from running an external hard drive. No SSDs, no nothing. And I've gone to the Xbox Series X, which is run on SSDs, and it's the newest Xbox console on the market. Is the experience much better than the previous console? Hell no. Is it better at all than the previous console? I'm going to say yes. Is it worth the £450? That's for you guys to decide. Going from a standard Xbox One running off hard drives to this running off SSDs and just being prepared for the future... I'm happy with my purchase. But at the same time, I do not play with discs. A lot of people have been reporting that the disc drives do not work on the Series X. They've been making funny noises. They've been rejecting to take discs at all. No, I'm not talking about the smoking out the top of the vent or floating a bloody ping pong ball off the top of your console. That's all shit. And you can tell that's all lies because the people that are talking about their vent smoking at the top... They've got different types of smoke coming out the top of the console and none of them have actually reported it to Xbox. So they're just internet trolls. So ignore the stuff about the smoking of the vents, ignore the floating ping pong ball that for some reason IGN and Lab Bible and GameSpot and GamesRadar, they all want to share it and get involved when they're idiots because they don't realise that it's a troll. And I actually commented and I put, oh, not you lot on one of them. I think it was GameSpot and about 5-10 minutes later they removed their article because they realised they're twats. And they're just trying to quickly jump on hype. But there have been genuine problems of the disk drives not working. I don't know what Microsoft or Xbox are planning to do with those consoles. But I won't ever try a disk in my console. So whether it works or not, I don't know. I don't have any disks to try. I don't plan to go out and buy one to try it. But if you're buying a Series X, be wary because the disk drive might not work. There could be other problems too. Just make sure if you do buy them, you have enough ventilation because the systems, when you're playing games and they're under quite heavy load, they do get pretty hot. Which is standard for a console, I'm not saying like overheating hot, I'm just saying they do get fairly hot. So just make sure you've got the ventilation so they don't overheat. Don't go doing that PS5 thing where like, I think it was Best Buy or something. They had a PlayStation 5 on display and it come up with the th like error on the TV saying, oh, this system's overheated. Yeah, they didn't have any ventilation. They trapped the PS5 in a plastic box. So in terms of heat and stuff, fine. It gets a little bit warm, whatever. The which systems don't. Even PCs do it. In terms of new games, PlayStation, you have like £60 AAA titles like Spider-Man. I think there might be a couple more, but Spider-Man Miles Morales is the one that sticks out on the top of my head. You do have new releases like the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, but that's available across all platforms. So, exclusive to PlayStation, you have Spider-Man. There will be more games, don't know release dates and everything like that, but on Xbox, you pretty much have Game Pass. They don't have any exclusives. Their flagship game, Halo Infinite, has been delayed for probably a couple of years. It was nowhere near ready, but they needed something to show the fan base. And to be completely honest, it fully backfired because where they are in development, it looked really shit anyway. But on Xbox, you do have Game Pass. You've got PlayStation Plus or whatever, you've got Game Pass. There are subscription services and you can play all of your old games on the consoles. I would say Game Pass is probably best value, but does that make Xbox any better than PS5? No, it fucking doesn't. Forget the wars, you make up your own mind. Do you want to buy a PlayStation? Do you want to buy an Xbox? That's entirely up to you. And don't let anyone tell you which one's better and which one's worse, because at the end of the day, they pretty much do the same things. In terms of storage, the Xbox and both the PS5 have one terabyte SSDs inside them. Although, for whatever reason, the PlayStation 5 doesn't actually come with anywhere near the full terabyte. It comes with like 660 gig or something like that. Not entirely sure how much the Series X had when I first booted it, because I had games transferred pretty much straight away. 
But I can tell you right now, with like seven or eight games installed, and the only Call of Duty being Black Ops Cold War, I've only got 180 gig left. So that's where expandable storage comes into it. PlayStation 5 have absolutely no options at the moment, and Microsoft are charging £220 for theirs. Then we move on to the big point, and that's the faster loading times. You would have seen lots of footage by now, of, oh, Red Dead was loading on the Xbox One in like 1 minute 37 and it now loads in like 32 seconds. I don't know about Red Dead specifically, but Destiny 2, I can tell you that it's a fucking lie. It's a straight up lie that these consoles are so much faster at loading. I was playing the Beyond Light campaign with Pete on Destiny 2. He's on the Xbox One X, I'm on the Xbox Series X. Two mission cutscenes that ended and spawned us back into this like social area. One of them, he was about two seconds behind me in loading, and he just plays with normal hard drives, no SSDs or anything. And the second one, he actually spawned in faster than me. I'm supposed to have the superior console. I'm supposed to be loading in faster. I've paid £450 for SSD gameplay, which is supposed to naturally have faster loading times. But not in every single situation is that going to benefit you. Some things really won't make a difference. But I can tell you right now, besides the loading times and everything, because it is still a better experience for me, going from a standard Xbox One with hard drives, moving up to an SSD with the Series X, it is a, like, a pretty big improvement from my old gameplay experience. But besides the faster loading times, besides the games you have available at the moment, because there are no true next-gen games, and there won't be for a couple of years. So besides all of those talking points, is the console actually worth it? I'm going to say no. Not straight away. Unless you're desperate. Yeah, I pretty much was desperate to get one. Unless you're desperate, if you can hold off and wait, I would definitely recommend waiting for these consoles you do not need to rush and the one key thing about my decision to say that and recommend not rushing and spending your money is because i'm pretty sure every game if not almost every game is available to play cross generation i've been playing destiny 2 with pete across platforms from series x back down to xbox one i've been playing black ops cold war with lewis going from me playing on the Series X and Lewis on the Xbox One. I can still enjoy everything with my friends. Party systems are working just like normal. There's pretty much no change. I can still enjoy that full experience with my friends and it doesn't affect them in any way. The only thing it's doing is giving me a little bit of a benefit for faster loading times. And to be fair, some games do have improved performance, like in December, when they optimise Destiny 2 for the Series X, it's going to run better. Cold War is apparently running up to 120 FPS when you're playing multiplayer, not that I play too much of that. But it does feel a little bit smoother. Although, is it worth paying £450 for a little bit of a smoother experience? Absolutely not. I, I wouldn't say no. I'm glad I bought it for my personal experience, but if I'm going to put out my opinions and tell you whether I think it's worth it or not, then it might be worth it to you, might not. But I would say, do not rush. Look into it, think about it. Don't get desperate and just go out and get one literally the moment they're available. Because you could be disappointed in the lack of actual difference. You would expect the next generation platform to have at least two or three like new games so you can check out what the future years have to come. When all we've actually got I can't say anything about Valhalla, but the only other AAA game that's really available on Xbox at the moment is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. One, I've had to pay extra money for it, and two, I've had problems left, right, and centre. I've had game crashes, I've had server script errors in the campaign, I physically cannot play that campaign at the moment until they do a fix for it. I've had lighting errors to where the lights just flicker in certain parts of the Zombies map, uh, Die Machine or D-Machina, however you want to pronounce the bloody thing. And then I've also had incredible frame drops in certain areas where there's a lot of motion. But I'm not going to blame that on the console. I'm just saying, if you're buying these consoles to try next generation gaming, there's nothing out there at the moment that will really define the differences between Xbox One, Series X, PS4, PS5. There is absolutely nothing on the market at the moment. And I really don't think we're going to see anything for the next like two or three years. You don't even have to worry about Oh my god, Cyberpunk's coming out on December 10th, and oh, it's not going to be available on PS4 or Xbox One. No, every game they are currently making, and possibly for the next like 2-3 years, will also be available on the PS4 and Xbox One. So I do have a Series X, I've had it since launch day. If there's anything else you want to know, then let me know in the comments, I'll tell you just the full truth. I'm not going to hide anything, I'm not going to try and over-promote the consoles. 
Because, as I said, there's not a drastic difference in loading times. The consoles don't have any games to define them as next generation. Also, pretty much everything you are doing is available to do on the previous platforms too. So, on that note, we're going to leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about it in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.